Okay, today I have a couple of fun and interesting things to show you. I have a selenium rectifier right here and a silicon diode rectifier right here. These came before silicone and these are the rectifiers we have now. So, mainly I'm going to talk about this one. Move that guy over there. But as you can see, it's a lot larger than the silicon rectifier. I think this is, was used in an automobile. I am not positive, but I think so. Um, but basically how it works is there's in between the uh, heat sinks, kind of, are several different kinds of metals. Some conduct better than others. Um, showing how the diode works it kind of creates four diodes here and creates the turns the AC current into DC um, I'm not exactly sure what order they are but I know one's copper one's copper um, oxide another one's lead and I think one is carbon I'm not 100% sure um, I'm correct but I think that's what they are I'm not exactly how sure how those work either but I thought this was kind of interesting, and it still works. Um, I think it's rated for 12 volts, so um, that's what I run it on. This one, as you can see, is very, very small. And it has four diodes inside of it. You can see where the little wavy line is right here. Is That's where the AC comes in, one there and one there and then plus and minus. On the selenium rectifier, the DC comes out of here, negative, positive, and the two AC inputs. What's inside of these is four tiny tiny little diodes they don't have their enclosure like you see on another diode like these the components get that focus there are encased inside of there and there are four diodes in a diamond shape pointing various ways which when the AC comes in it rectifies it um, I'm not quite sure exactly how that does, how that works. Um, it's a complicated thing, and I'm not going to take the time to explain it, so if you want to know more, just Google it. Okay, so now we're going to test it. I've got a uh, DC and AC power supply. I have it switch switched on for AC right now, and we'll just connect the terminals here. Next we'll attach the DC output to a little DC motor. Here is the positive output. And here's the negative put output. and we'll turn on the power okay I have everything hooked up and I've got a little piece of tape hooked up to the motor um, axle so we'll turn it on here and it does indeed rectify it it doesn't rectify it completely but it still works enough to get the job done I'll show you what it does with the motor not on DC. I have it hooked up to AC and I'll switch the power on. Now you see it's not turning but it is vibrating a whole bunch. It's kind of running away so I'm going to turn it off here. That's because the AC is poles are switching back and forth so fast. 
that it isn't able to make the DC motor run. Now we'll do it with a silicone rectifier. Okay, so we'll attach AC output to the middle solder terminals. And then we will attach the DC and AC output to the motor. I hope this rectifier is ready for 12 volts. Oops. And now I'll switch the power on. Now this one works a whole lot better than the sel selenium rectifier. Um, just because there's better materials. So as you can see it goes a lot faster and doesn't just vibrate as much. There's the little, little lesson in selenium and silicone rectifiers. So I hope you enjoyed this. Please rate, comment, and subscribe.